In this video, we're going to focus on the alkoxy mercuration demercuration reaction. But before we get into that, I want to compare two reactions. Perhaps you saw my previous video on oxymercuration demercuration. And so I'm going to compare that reaction with the alkoxy mercuration demercuration reaction. So consider these two reactions and determine the major product of these two reactions. Feel free to pause the video if you want to. So what do you think the difference will be in the products of these two reactions? So what you need to know is that for the oxymercuration demercuration reaction, it converts an alkene into an alcohol. If you take off a hydrogen from water, you're going to get an OH. And all you need to do is put the OH on the most substituted carbon of the double bond, which is, in this case, the tertiary carbon. Well, the alkoxy mercuration demercuration reaction has the same VGO chemistry as the reaction above. The only difference here is that we're adding an alcohol instead of H2O. And so if you drop off the H in this alcohol, we're going to add an OCH3 group. And so this particular reaction converts an alkene into an ether. And so that's the difference. But now let's go over the mechanism for that reaction. So the first thing we need to talk about is mercury acetate, specifically mercury 2 acetate, which you can call it mercuric acetate. So this can ionize in solution, releasing an acetate ion. Now the mercury atom has a lone pair. And once it gives up an acetate ion, it's going to have a positive charge. And so the alkene has a strong desire to interact with this electrophile because the alkene is a nucleophile. And so it's going to attack the, this particular ion. And we're going to get this initially. So we have a tertiary carbocation and a lone pair on the mercury atom. Now the mercury atom is going to use its lone pair to attack the carbocation. And so we're going to get this cyclic mercurinium ion. And now the mercury atom bears the positive charge. And it's important to understand that these two structures are resonance structures of each other. So what we need to do is draw a resonance hybrid. And so we can do that like this. So instead of putting a full positive charge on either the carbon alone or on the mercury atom alone, it's best that they share that positive charge. And so that creates a more stable situation. So at this point, the methanol molecule will react with the carbon that has the positive charge. And so that's why it's going to attack the most substituted carbon atom of the double bond. It goes for the tertiary carbon as opposed to the secondary carbon because the tertiary carbon can better stabilize the positive charge than the secondary carbon. We know that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations. So once the methanol molecule attacks the tertiary carbon, this bond is going to break. And those electrons, let me make sure I drew that correctly, We'll go back to the mercury atom. And so right now, we're going to get a structure that looks like this. And now the oxygen bears the positive charge. So we have a, this is called an oxonium species. And now we're going to use the acetate ion, the one that was 
disassociated from this molecule. We're going to use it to grab the hydrogen because acetate is a weak base. And so at this point, we have an ether, but we're not finished yet. So now we need to use sodium borohydride. And this reagent is going to replace the mercury group with a hydrogen, giving us our final answer. So that's the basic idea behind the alkoxy mercuration demercuration reaction. Now let's go ahead and work on some example problems. So go ahead and try this problem. So instead of using uh, methanol, let's use ethanol. So what will be the major product in this reaction? Now we're not going to get any rearrangements in this reaction, even though we have a tertiary carbon adjacent to the alkene. So like the other reactions, this reaction will proceed with more carbonic addition. So we need to add the alcohol to the secondary carbon, the most substituted carbon on that double bond. So what we're going to do is drop off an H and then add CH3, CH2 with the O attached to the other carbon. And so this is going to be the major product. Now keep in mind, you can get a racemic mixture. We do have a chiral center, so we can get two stereoisomers. So this is the other major product. Now let's work on some other examples. So instead of using ethanol, I'm going to use propanol this time, specifically one propanol. So looking at the carbon atoms that are part of the double bond, they're both secondary. So the alcohol can go on any one of those carbon atoms. So we can add the alcohol on this carbon. I'm going to draw this as a line structure. Or we can add it on this carbon. Now, both carbons are chiral. And so we can get some other stereoisomers. We can get that product. We could also get this one too. So we can get a racemic mixture of those two products, giving us a total of four stereoisomers. And so that's it for this problem. Those are the products that we can get in this reaction. Now, Let's work on one more example. So let's say we have cyclohexene and let's react it with mercury acetate and methanol. So we have the alkoxy mercuration step without the demercuration step. In the first step, you need to add two things, the alcohol which will come in this form. And then this group taken off one acetate molecule. Now what you need to know is that after the first step, the OCH3 group and the HGOAC group, they're added with anti-addition. So as you can see, the OCH3 group is on the wedge and the mercury acetate group is on a dash. Now we can also get the enantiomer. So we get a, a racemic mixture of products here. I drew that wrong. Let's do that again. So 
So these are the two products that we can get in this reaction after the first step. But if we use sodium borohydride at this point, then we're going to replace this group with a hydrogen. And so stereochemistry is no longer important. Notice that this carbon is not chiral. So at this point, we only get one final product. 